this opening song that I just played for you really describes Elizabeth Barrett Browning's life because in her earlier years there's a lot of dramatic things that went on and really intense and they happened very subtly without any warning so this is really like a good song to describe that. But let's not jump ahead. Let's start at the beginning. So she was born, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, was born on March 6th, 1806 in Durham, England. She was the oldest of 11 children. She grew up into a very wealthy family, and her father's wealth came from slave plantations in Jamaica. And because of this, Elizabeth was very, very against slavery and oppression. Her family had strong Christian values and morals because they were they practiced Protestantism, and um, this Christian values and morals showed up a lot in Elizabeth Bear Browning's poetry. As a child, her father really encouraged her to read and to write, and um, because of this encouragement from her father, when she was 14 years old, she wrote her first epic poem, The Battle of Marathon, which her father had secretly published, and he also printed many copies for himself and his family because he was so proud of her. When Elizabeth was 15 years old, she developed a serious illness which affected her lungs and her spine. Little did she know that this illness she would have to deal with for the rest of her life. She had taken opium, which had also later, you'll learn, that it affected her poetry. When Elizabeth was 22 years old, her mother died. And this loss, surprisingly, was not very tragic, I should say, to the Barrett family because no one was really that close to their mother except for Mr. Barrett, but he was really the only one who severely suffered from this loss. When Elizabeth was 29 years old, her family moved to London. However, there her illness became worse, and it was possibly due to the London weather, considering it is always raining there. No one really knows why. It's a pretty depressing place to be, so her illness became worse. And um, this also created anxiety in her, which also contributed to the kind of poet she became. She had to calm herself down with a sort of meditation, and um, that gave her a lot of time to reflect and think, and that also contributed to her poetry. Because of her worsening condition, Elizabeth decided to go to Torquay, which was by the sea, because she thought the sea air would do her well. And uh, her brother Edward, her favorite brother Edward, visited her when she was there, and she begged him to stay because she loved him. However, while he was there, he got in a boating accident and died. Elizabeth was so depressed and so upset and guilty because she thought it was all her fault because she made him stay there. She never spoke or wrote about the event. She even locked herself in her room when she returned to London for many years, and she just wrote. Elizabeth wrote a poem called Lady Geraldine's Courtship, in which she praised Robert Browning and his works. A few years later, Robert wrote her a letter thanking her for her generosity and her kind words that she said about him. They started writing back and forth, and eventually they met and they started dating, and eventually they got married. However, this marriage was very difficult because Elizabeth's father very strongly disagreed, and so they basically had to secretly get married, and after they got married, they moved to Italy. While she was in Italy, her health seemed to be getting much better, and she regained a lot of strength and energy, and um, she continued to write, and her fame continued to grow, and people widely respected her poetry. And fortunately, in 1849, she regained enough of her strength to be able to have a child. It was a boy, and his name was Robert Wideman Browning, also known as Penn. Elizabeth stayed in Italy and was very involved in politics and religion and everything that was going on around her until her death in June of 1861. 
That is all. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed hearing about the life of Elizabeth Barrett Browning.